William. You're up bright and early. How are the twins? They're, what, six months now? Oh, they're fine. Must be a bit cramped in there. What with your parents and Anne and your three young children? Not to mention your four siblings. Yeah, it does feel a little crowded at times. Of course, you really only have yourself to blame. Getting Anne pregnant and having to get married wasn't exactly the best thing for your future. And you were such a smart young boy. I thought you'd make it to university for sure. Well, life doesn't always work out the way you planned. My father needed my help. Is that a suitcase you're carrying? Uh, yeah. I'm off to London for a little while. London? What for? So, you know that acting troupe that's here in town? There was a fight the other night, and two of their actors got involved. One of them got stabbed to death. What does that have to do with you? They needed a replacement, and I showed them what I can do. You know me. Just give me a few minutes and I can memorize anything. A replacement? When will you be back? Well, they said if I worked out okay, they'd keep me on permanently. And just abandon your wife and three babies. And they'll be fine here. Besides, once I make it big, I can send them money from London. Actors making money? Yeah, right. You're a bright lad, Will. But I bet we see you back here before the start of winter. <laughs> oh, sounds like the twins are up. Good luck to you, William. So there he is, Sarah. A 21-year-old small-town Tanner's assistant. A young father with three children, leaving his family for an uncertain future in the London theatre. An unknown with no obvious potential for greatness. It's part of the wonderful mystery of Shakespeare that over the next 25 years, this unpromising young man will become the greatest writer in the history of the English language. So how did he get to this point, and what happened after he left Stratford? William Shakespeare was born in 1564, son of a successful merchant in the small town of Stratford-upon-Avon, population 2000. As a young boy, William attended the local grammar school. School means 12 hours a day, six days a week. He would have studied lots and lots of Latin, which would have given the future playwright good doses of Roman history, philosophy, and literature. While most children left school at age seven, William attended grammar school until age 14. It's around then that his father goes bankrupt, and William is forced to start working, probably as an assistant tanner, but possibly as a private tutor or a legal assistant. At 18, he gets a local farmer's daughter pregnant. Anne Hathaway is already in her late 20s, and they marry hastily. Three years later, he has two more children, and the five of them are still living in his parents' house. In his early 20s, then, Shakespeare arrives in London. With little money, contacts, or formal education, he starts out as a journeyman actor, rehearsing during the day and performing at night, while living in some squalid room and eking by on a pittance. In a young theatre industry which is growing rapidly in popularity, there is a strong demand for new plays. And within a few years, Shakespeare is writing plays as well as acting. Even his earliest plays proved to be commercial successes, and over the next two decades, he will average almost two plays per year, a prodigious output by any standard. Due to his early success, Shakespeare has offered an ownership position in the Lord Chamberlain's Men, which will become the leading theatre company of the period. Besides being the in-house playwright, Shakespeare remains a principal actor for the company throughout his career, and almost certainly plays an important management role as well. By the age of 30, Shakespeare is famous. He has noble patrons and even counts Queen Elizabeth as a fan. Although he continues to live in London, his new fortune allows his wife and children to live well in the second largest house in Stratford. Shakespeare was incredibly naturally gifted and must have had a photographic memory. His plays are packed with thousands of things he experienced, observed, or just heard about. And his mastery of the English language is unparalleled. In his published works, he uses over 30,000 different words. This is substantially more than any other writer, before or since. And almost half of those words are used only once. We should remember that all this is in the age of quill pens, decades before the publication of the first English dictionary. But beyond artistic talent, Shakespeare seems to have adopted the qualities he observed in his father, ambition, industriousness, and entrepreneurship. Even after he had achieved fame and fortune, he remains extremely productive and creative, continually evolving his dramatic style. Finally, in his late 40s, he retires and moves back to peace and quiet with his wife in Stratford. 
But sadly, he doesn't have much time to enjoy it. William dies at the age of 52, leaving us with roughly 38 plays, 154 sonnets, and an unmatched theatrical legacy.